Uh, thank you for inviting me and um, allowing me this really wonderful opportunity to um, speak to you, but also to learn about these other great initiatives in the state of California. And um, gosh, I hope I can um, find some partnerships in this room for um, future projects. <laughs> so again, thank you. Um, the Land Art Generator Initiative has created a platform to reimagine our future energy landscapes through a creative lens. Um, we invite interdisciplinary teams from around the world to conceive of large-scale public artworks that have the added benefit of creating utility-scale clean energy. So we are asking teams to think of renewable energy technologies as the medium for our works. In addition to a wide range of programming, we hold an international design competition on a biennial schedule. And what you're seeing here is a submission from our 2010 competition uh, for sites in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. This artwork would create enough energy for 100 homes, um, U.S. homes, and um, everything you're looking at is a productive solar panel. So it's just been reimagined through the lens of uh, an artist and architect and engineer. In 2012, our competition was for New York City. This utilizes wind technology. And in 2014, we were based in Copenhagen, um, right across from the Little Mermaid and on an old shipyard. This particular project would create enough energy for 700, uh, 750 homes, give or take. So what you can see here is that these are all sites that inherently inspire and bring the greatest minds around the world to the table with the idea that renewable energy infrastructure can also be an enhancement to public space and that cities can meet ambitious carbon goals while creating new and exciting places for recreation and learning. The outcomes of these three past design competitions show that we can bring, begin to think about renewable energy installations as more than just utilitarian objects. So this example from 2010, Windstock, um, is inspired by the way grass blades wave in the wind. So you can imagine being uh, like a little ant amongst these grass blades walking around. Um, at the same time, this is generating enough energy for 1,000 homes. And here we are in California, 2016. Um, Quite a few things attracted us to bring the Loggy competition to Southern California. We knew that renewable energy is a top priority in the state, and that, paired with the seriousness of the drought, led us to choose a coastal site adjacent to the Santa Monica Pier. Um, this, we've expanded our design brief this year to include drinking water harvesting technologies. So right now, uh, the eyes of the world are looking at this site as um, a potential for a, a new type of artwork. And, and this portfolio is going to be fantastic because it is our first coastal site and will actually create a portfolio that coastal sites around the world can look at and choose um, artworks out of. Um, the competition closes in a few days on May 15th, and selections will be made and announced in October at the LA Convention Center for Green Build 2016, where we'll have an exhibition, along with exhibitions in uh, the city of Santa Monica. Now, for every competition, we create unique educational materials, such as our field guide to renewable energy technology, art and energy cards, um, and many others. These are mostly free downloads on our website, and they're accessible to young people, to adults, professionals, university students, really anyone. Last year, we did something new. We launched a youth prize for middle school and high school students with the intention of building a global community of young people equipped to design our energy landscapes. And we were absolutely thrilled when we were invited to speak by the Museum of Art and History, MOA, in Lancaster, um, to the school board meeting in the Antelope Valley of California. Um, the reception was fantastic. And Donita Wynn, the chair of the school board, declared that the Antelope Valley was going to win. Um, and I can say behind the scenes that it looks like, in fact, they might. Um, so we, there are uh, several high schools and middle schools right now in the Antelope Valley designing for this youth competition. 
Uh, but what we were really thrilled to see is that she took this so seriously and reached out to the high schools, went out door to door to these high schools and talked to the teachers and principals about participating. Um, we then followed up and did workshops throughout the Antelope Valley and um, have built some really tremendous relationships with those teachers. The creative economy is what results when public policy is put in place to nurture a social environment ripe for innovation and cross-disciplinary collaboration. This requires expanding public access to the arts and humanities and increasing opportunities for education that does not forsake art and creativity for a focus on math and science. Within the context of the work that we do at the Land Art Generator Initiative, they should all exist together in a continuum of research and practice. Science and technology provides the framework for the artistic and educational practice of the Land Art Generator Initiative. And at the same time, we are closing the loop on the art science continuum as the design outcomes of Loggy influence the way that scientists and engineers see their work. Biologist E.O. Wilson, in The Meaning of Human Existence, makes a point about what is our most important possession as a species and concludes that it is the humanities rather than our scientific scientific achievements. In fact, the sciences need the humanities in order to continue to advance. In the search for breakthroughs, scientific teams are expanding and becoming more academically diverse. Further advances in biotechnology, nanotechnology, robotics, and energy science will all require creative thinking and a strong ethical foundation to ensure that they are aligned with our cultural values. This requires that the scientists of tomorrow find their education steeped deeply in the arts and humanities of today. The Land Art Generator Initiative is founded on this notion, and to that end, we are providing project-based learning through programs such as our art and energy camps. The camps provide participating youth with critical skills in STEAM subjects by implementing the design engineering process for innovative solutions and built outcomes that provide sustainable energy to communities. Um, so this was a group of uh, uh, 18 young people, age 7 to 18, and over the course of six weeks, they had field trips and lessons in energy science, and at the end, they had designed and helped to build the solar artwork that is now generating clean energy for a community center in their neighborhood. Providing STEM education to middle school and high school youth using the arts as the delivery vehicle is an engaging way to instill an early interest in the scientific method, provide useful technical skills, and introduce systems thinking. These are the types of skills that can help youth create positive change in their own neighborhoods while putting them on a path toward innovative and fulfilling careers. And we're really thrilled to say that we are working closely with the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster to bring this camp to the Antelope Valley this summer. So it'll run from June 15 to July 15. Um, again, it's a wide range of age that we um, encourage to participate in this camp. So it'll be anywhere from age 8 to 17. And um, the final outcome will be a project built at a, uh, a roundabout in Lancaster. And I want to point out that in a recent report um, highlighted by the World Economic Forum, as automation continues to change the workplace, the highest valued skills are increasingly dominated by creativity. And in fact, by 2020, it's estimated that the number third skill that we must have is creativity. Five years ago, it was in 10th position. So the need for creativity as a skill is increasing. At the same time, critical thinking, complex problem solving, cognitive flexibility, and emotional intelligence. These are all qualities that require the arts to be integrally interwoven into the fabric of our lives. We are fortunate to be working in California, a state where this important conversation is being taken very seriously. And we thank you for the work that you are doing to increase support for the arts to the benefit of the people and economic progress. Thank you. Well, thank you. Both very intriguing. Yeah. Um, I just have a, a couple of quick questions um, for you, Elizabeth. So have any of these projects actually been built? Okay, so we started the project in 2010, and of course this is the question we get more than anything. We're building the first project in Pittsburgh. It's an out from, outcome from our 2010 competition, originally designed for a site in Abu Dhabi. It's been reimagined for an urban environment in um, the city center of Pittsburgh. Okay. And the idea is, so now, now are, the, are the people who apply for the 
competitions, are they are they kind of international design folks? Or are they high schools or what? Yeah, um, the competition is open to professionals around the world. Um, we also get a great participation from university students, and that was something that was a surprise to us. So even in 2012, we were seeing that universities such as Yale um, and many, many others are using our design brief for senior studio coursework. And we know that there are a few universities in California using our design brief this semester, um, including uh, Cal Poly Pomona, amongst others. Um, so we open it up. It's a free international competition. Um, for 2014, we had 60 countries participating. Um, 300 submissions came in. So, for example, so just so I understand, when when the school board president up in the Antelope Valley said, you know, we're going to win, what was she referring to? Yeah, like a that's, high school project? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. For 2014, or 2016, 16. what year are we in? We have included um, a new competition, and this is for middle school and high school students. So in addition okay. to our professional competition for Site in Santa Monica, the site that the young people are designing for is within that yellow dashed line, where the professionals are designing on the other side for the breakwater. We have middle school and high school students around the world right now designing for this area. So two competitions for the site in Santa Monica. Okay. All right. And the professionals are designing really offshore. Correct. Like a, like a, a water... That's on the correct. ocean kind of project, okay. Um, which is great. It uh, allows our teams to use technologies that they've not been able to. So, of course, they'll be able to tap into solar and wind, but um, wave and tidal are both considerations for this site, which makes it really dynamic. And, again, a great model for cities around the world to look at, coastal cities around the world to look at this particular mm -hmm. competition. Cool. Interesting. Any questions, Kansa? 